Hi friends, welcome to today's Q&A and actually before we even get into this, I have to give shout outs to where shout outs are due. So shout out to my friend who I will not be naming but did leave me a really awesome question. What are my thoughts on tanning your genitals? So if you want to learn about tanning your genitals or why people put red lights on their testicles for testosterone production, then you have stumbled across the perfect video for you because we're covering all of that today. Okay, well, hang on. Before we get into it, I just want to acknowledge I have a massive pimple here, but we can just pretend it doesn't exist and hop on into the actual Q&A. What are my thoughts on tanning your genitals? So the whole idea behind actually like tanning your genitals comes from these ancient practices called peritoneum tanning. Yeah, peritoneum tanning. Because your peritoneum is like one of the types of tissues that you have down there. And the idea is that when you're out there full nude exposing your peritoneum to the sun, it's gonna give you more prana or it's gonna give you all this invigorating solar life force energy and just make you feel invigorated. Here's my opinion on it. I love being in the sun because like when the sun just touches your body, it feels really good. But just like too much sun on your skin will damage your skin, too much sun on your genitalia will damage your genitalia. And your skin down there is fragile. Guys, this is so weird to talk about. So just either fast forward or bear with me. Anyways, your genitalia skin is fragile and sensitive. You don't want to be lying out there full nude in the sun, exposing your vagina or your penis to the sun for too long because you're going to burn it and you're going to cause cellular damage that's probably going to be really uncomfortable. So honestly, just tan the rest of your body. If you want to enhance that prana or you want that invigorating solar energy, just go out in the sun and be active, but you don't need to go out in the sun full nude, everything exposed to the elements, because you're probably just gonna end up causing sun damage to your very fragile areas. Some people will also talk about tanning your butt for better vitamin D synthesis. Honestly, if you can just get 15 minutes of direct sun on your face or on the back of your neck, you're gonna be doing totally fine for vitamin D synthesis. I live in Canada. In the winter, I take vitamin D every day, 2000 IUs because the sun just isn't at the right angle that it needs for my body to synthesize vitamin D. But I'm not going out in the winter full nude, shaking my bum around, hoping that it's giving me more vitamin D. And because we are on the topic of tanning your genitals or exposing your genitals to light, I've heard that you can use red light therapy. This works on guys. I don't think it works on girls because the anatomy is just different. If you're a guy and you can expose your testicles, to red light, it might be able to increase testosterone production. This red light is reaching deep into the cells, the Leydig cells in your testicles, which actually make testosterone, and it's improving their function. It's improving their ability to produce testosterone. I don't know how science-based that is. That's absolutely just anecdotal, but the theory is if red light can improve cellular function and you can expose your testosterone producing cells to red light, then you could potentially be increasing natural testosterone. If you're female, it doesn't quite work the same because our ovaries are inside our bodies. They're not hanging outside our bodies. So I'm not sure how easy it would be to get that red light penetrating deep onto the cells that are producing hormones. However, if you are a woman and you're interested in all this red light therapy, you can use red light therapy on your face or on any part of your bodies that have scar tissue or blemishes. And again, that red light therapy is improving cellular health and it might be able to help stimulate collagen production. If you don't want to spend like seven million dollars on a freaking red light box this big, you can literally just drink bone broth because it is the most bioavailable source of this nice rich collagen that's going to help support your skin health and keep it youthful and elastic. How to not get hung over. So what actually causes a hangover? Well, the three biggest causes of a hangover are gonna be inflammation, dehydration, like your electrolyte imbalances, and, and that buildup of toxins, that buildup of metabolic waste products. The other thing that's making you feel like absolute rubbish when you drink is low blood sugar because alcohol will mess around with your liver's metabolism. Basically, your liver is responsible responsible for metabolizing glucose, sugar, fatty acids, proteins, and alcohol. But because alcohol is a toxin, 
once alcohol is in your body and it starts showing up at your liver, it takes number one priority for detox. So when your liver is actually detoxing the alcohol, there's two steps. First, you go from alcohol to acetaldehyde. Then you go from acetaldehyde to acetate, and then your body can easily convert that acetate into carbon dioxide and water, and you just pee it out, breathe it out. But both those steps require NAD. NAD comes from your B vitamin niacin, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD. So that, that comes from your B vitamins. By the way, if you're an alcoholic, sorry I'm like pointing at you guys calling you alcoholics. If you drink, you're probably more likely to be deficient in B vitamins because of this alcohol metabolism. But anyways, back to the alcohol detox. NAD is a essential part of all metabolism. So if you're burning sugar and turning sugar into energy, you need NAD. If you have zero NAD, you literally cannot turn sugar into energy. You cannot metabolize fat into energy if you don't have any NAD. So because alcohol is a toxin, it's this neurotoxin, your liver prioritizes detoxifying the alcohol and you only have so much NAD. So once this alcohol starts showing up at your liver, all this NAD is going into detoxing the alcohol. And it's not going towards glucose metabolism or fatty acid metabolism. So all the NAD supply is diverted over here and there's none left over here to turn carbs into energy or to turn fatty acids into energy or to break down stored glycogen, release that into the blood to maintain stable blood sugar. So the more you drink, the more metabolism of fatty acids and carbohydrates suffers because the more hoarding of NAD you're doing to detox the alcohol. And eventually your blood sugar is going to start dropping and you're liver is going to really struggle to maintain stable blood glucose. You feel like absolute rubbish and your brain can't function properly. And that's one of the reasons why you actually get memory loss or dizziness or confusion or when you're drunk. And then to actually like avoid a hangover, you want to make sure your body has enough B vitamins. You want to make sure you're hydrated with some type of electrolyte drink. It doesn't just mean like eat a bunch of pizza because it's high in sodium. No, it means take an electrolyte supplement or add like a natural mineral rich salt to your water. So your body's getting this balance of potassium, magnesium, sodium, and other unique minerals that it needs to properly maintain fluid balance. For me, balancing my electrolytes, honestly, I just outsource to an electrolyte supplement. This one is my favorite because it's got that nice blend of these essential minerals, the electrolytes you need, but it's also enhanced with bovine collagen. One, uh, oopsies. One of your next questions was if I use salt and how much salt do I use? Yeah, I am like freaking crazy about salt, but I'm not worried about high blood pressure or any of these negative effects of too much salt because I literally do not eat anything in a package except for smoked salmon. Anyways, my point is I do not eat any food with added sodium. It's not like I'm going out looking at things. I'm like, oh, this has added sodium, can't eat that. Nothing that I enjoy eating is processed or ultra processed. So if I didn't salt my food, my diet would be way too low in sodium for my activity levels, how much I sweat, and honestly, just to support healthy nerve function. So I use this salt with absolute freedom, absolute liberty. It's got rosemary, garlic, sage, and a little black pepper, and it is so freaking good. And I go through it so fast. But if your diet is really heavy in these ultra processed foods, you're definitely getting enough sodium, but you're not getting enough potassium or magnesium. And this is when you see high sodium diets causing blood pressure issues. It's because you're getting in all this sodium chloride, but you're not getting in magnesium and potassium to keep everything balanced. When I'm adding salt, I'm using a sea salt because it's not just salt as in sodium chloride. It's got this full complement of minerals from the ocean, things like magnesium, potassium, and other unique minerals as well. This question, 
how many calories should I eat or how do I even know how many calories I should eat? And honestly, it's different for everybody and it's different day to day and it's different depending on what your goals are. So if I'm not working with you, if you're not my client and I don't know where you're at, then I really can't answer this question for you. But what I can say is go online, find a BMI calculator and calculate your BMI. If you're underweight, then you want to consider increasing your calories so you can increase your body weight, increase your nice, healthy metabolic muscle mass, maybe increase a little fat as well to get your body into this healthy BMI range. If you're overweight, then you want to consider reducing calories and exercising more and really targeting putting on more muscle mass to help increase your metabolism, burn some fat, and bring your body weight down into that nice healthy range but if you if you really want to start manipulating your calories to control your body composition and how you look you're gonna want to track your calories for a full week to get an accurate picture of how much fat carbs and protein you're getting in every day whatever that calorie intake is that's your maintenance. Now, if your goal is to increase lean muscle mass, you're going to want to stay at your maintenance and then slowly increase your calories by about 10%. Same thing on the other side. Once you find your maintenance calories and say you really want to focus on fat loss, two of the best strategies are, are to either stay eating your maintenance calories and just do more strength and resistance training to increase lean muscle mass and help burn fat, or you're gonna wanna go into a slight 10% calorie deficit. So if you're eating 2000 calories a day, you're gonna wanna cut 200 calories. So now you've gone from 2000 to 1,800 calories. And of course that's not gonna give you instant overnight fat loss, but it's gonna give you something nice and sustainable that's not gonna totally trash and slow down your metabolism. And then this question just ties in really nicely with that is I'm scared to do a bulk, help, what are your tips? I like this question because I just did a bulk and also I feel like my arms got, ooh, I don't wanna look like a man, but anyways, my arms got stronger and my butt grew a little bit. I'm wearing sweatpants so it makes it look like my butt's bigger, but my butt grew like a centimeter and my waist increased like two centimeters now. Last time I gave you guys a reverse diet update, my weight hadn't changed. Now my weight is up two or three pounds. My butt is up. I can squat 155 pounds. I can deadlift 145 pounds and my weight is 113 pounds. So I feel like I'm crushing it. And th these are all the benefits you get on a bulk. So there, we just addressed that question. Don't be scared. Focus on your strength gains focused on your energy focus on how like totally kick-ass and awesome you feel here's my practical advice and trigger warning because some of you guys might not be happy with what i'm about to say i weighed myself every day i measured my waist almost every day sometimes i forgot and i measured my butt every day what i'm doing with that data is i'm objectively looking at the facts i can see over the past two months okay the overall trend is i've gained two pounds i've just gained two pounds that's objective i can look at myself in the mirror and i can like pinch my belly and be like oh i'm getting fat now well then i look at the data and i see i've only gained two pounds i'm not getting fat it's probably muscle mass because I've increased my strength. And then also I can cross reference that weight gain against my waist circumference and my butt measurements. And I see my waist on average hasn't changed, but then I see that my butt has increased. So that's telling me I'm not really putting on that much body fat and it's mostly lean muscle mass because I'm really targeting growing my glutes as you all I'm sure are aware by now. So this weight is going on to my butt and my legs because I'm targeting these muscles. It's not turning into belly fat because I can see, I can look at the numbers and say, my waist circumference has stayed the same. So clearly I'm not getting fatter. So, so if you are on a reverse diet, if you are on a bulk, you have to understand that the whole point of this is to speed up your metabolism eat more food, and put on lean, metabolically active muscle mass. And what you get 
out of it, more energy, healthier hormones, more food freedom. Now you're able to eat more food while maintaining a healthy, beautiful, fit, strong body. If you're scared, focus on objective measurements, things that you can just look straight at the facts and say, okay, my weight's gone up. Am I getting stronger? Can I lift more? Do I have more energy? And if your weight's gone up, but you're saying yes to I feel stronger, yes to I have more, more energy, who cares? Those yeses mean life is getting better. And if it totally sucks and you feel like you get super fat or super big, just bring your calories back down again. But I say that with full confidence that you're probably not going to blow up and get super big. And if you do, just reduce your calories, focus on strength training a little more, throw in a little bit of cardio and your weight will come down and you'll be fine. But honestly, it is so much worth it. Right, kitten? Sorry. Okay, this is gonna be the conclusion of part one of the Q&A. Also, by the way, look how um cool this little clock is. This is from like the 1800s. And if you wind it up, you can like wind up the gearbox in here and it actually dings. I don't know how it works, but it will actually ding. Okay, anyways, this has been part one of the Q&A because if I did the whole part one, part two together, honestly, it would have just been way too long. And honestly, I don't even think I would be able to watch the whole thing. So this is part one. Part two is going to come out next week. And honestly, I kind of forget what's in part two, but just check it out next week. It'll be really good and really fun. And you'll see my favorite books. And if you like what I do, or if you want to learn more about what I do, I have a few little blog posts on my website and then I also have literally a whole entire ebook that comes with a workbook all about personalized nutrition. You get my personalized nutrition plan, like a copy of what I do personally. And then you also get the sample templates so you can create your own, customize your own personal nutrition plan with the foods list. And then with all the information that you're learning about carbs, fats, metabolism, body composition, all that stuff is gonna help you tailor your own plan to meet your goals and make healthy eating actually effortless, make it feel good. So this concludes everything. Whoa, it looks like I have a lot of freckles right now. Anyways, this concludes everything for today and I'll see you next week for the next bit of the Q&A.